Um, first of all, when I was shuffling out the cards, um, I see this bell and it, it's huge. It, it's a really big golden bell and it's, um, it has like a little bit of a stand. So it's kind of hanging on the stand and I see mountains on either side of it. And somebody comes up and, you know, rings the bell, like they, they pull a string and then the bell, um, kind of, um, I guess wobbles back and forth and then it makes a ringing sound, a huge ringing sound. And then it zooms out and there's um, like the ocean and I see a bunch of dolphins just kind of um, gliding across the water, going towards the bells. Um, so that that's the message, that's the image that I was getting. And instinctively, the message that I got was, um, you know, dolphins are really, really um, smart animals. And uh, they know how to communicate with each other. And the fact that they're all converging and moving in one direction towards, um, towards something, towards something that's, you know, guiding them in, towards the bell. And, and bells in general usually signifies to me, you know, messages, communication. And especially it's a signal that something is, is coming in. Somebody is coming in. Some messages are coming in. And, and things like that. So I, I feel for many of you, uh, if you have been waiting around for a situation, the, the bells signify to me that it's going to get resolved and there's going to be communication regarding whatever it is that's weighing heavily on your mind. So first of all, from the spread, what I feel is um, there's a, a, a love connection here. And uh, I, I do feel like an Aries dealing with another fire sign. Okay, so an Aries, Sagittarius, um, Leo, and another Aries. And um, what I'm just getting, you know, uh, all zodiac signs, signs aside, what I'm getting here is uh, I feel like somebody was really, really dragging their feet. And they have made you wait for a very long time. And I feel like, you know, you really, really love this person. You care about this person. And it's just the, 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 the situation dragged on for so long. And uh, while they made you wait, you know, it's not exactly like you were staying still waiting for them. Life moves forward and you were distracting yourself with other things. And whenever they, you know, decide to come around, then you would engage with them in conversation. But it just seems like there was a situation that really didn't get off the ground. Like it, it just didn't have the chance or the opportunity or whatever circumstantial, uh, you know, uh, whatever circumstances surrounding the situation, it was not able to get off the ground. And I feel almost like many of you feel like, if the person comes around, I'm still going to give it another try. I'm still going to fight another day. I'm still willing to invest my all into the situation. So I, I feel like you care about this person. And some of you might have even, you know, really loved this person. And what I'm getting is um, I feel like this person is either intimidated by you or or they're dealing with trust issues where they're not able to give you their heart or they, they feel a little bit scared about engaging with you or connecting with you or being in a relationship with you. Okay, so there's some fear here that I'm, I'm picking up. And um, if this is a person that you're linked up with, like via social media, um, they're looking at your images, they're looking at your pictures, and um, they might feel like, oh, wow, you know, the Aries has a lot of um, suitors around them. You might, for example, if you're a heterosexual uh, and you're male, you might take a lot of pictures with a lot of women, okay? These could be cousins, these could be uh, friends, these could be co-workers, they could just be, you know, platonic friends. But without the context, without knowing your personal life and someone just scrolls through your social media and they see all these pictures of you and, you know, the opposite gender and they, they could jump to conclusions and think that you are um, not available, you're dating somebody or you're dating a lot of people or you're just, um, you know, um, you're just dealing with a lot of people. So that's why they're a little bit 
skittish, okay? Um, I'm also seeing some men. So for those of you who are women and you are dating men, I'm seeing some of the men looking at your social media and I don't, I, I feel something like there is a very provocative energy. So I don't know if you are taking pictures that are a little bit provocative, like you're, um, you're not wearing a lot of clothes or you're wearing like, you know, plunging necklines and they're looking at that and I feel almost like they're just, um, kind of shocked. Okay. Like they didn't expect that. Um, I'm also seeing that for them, so if you're female dating men, um, the, the men are looking at your profiles or looking at your pictures and I, I'm seeing a lot of chest, you know, like, uh, bearing your chest or wearing clothes that are very revealing when it comes to cleavage, when it comes to things like that. And so they, it might be a little bit of a turnoff to them. I'm not saying not to do it. You do whatever rocks your boat. But I feel like if you're dealing with somebody and they're just kind of very distant or, you know, after they connect with you via social media, they became a little bit distant. It's because I feel like they are very modest. I'm seeing somebody who is a little bit more conservative, a little bit more modest when it comes to their bodies, when it comes to, you know, um, sexuality, when it comes to like what to reveal to the public. So for example, they might even think that, you know, wearing a bikini and showing that to the world is not appropriate. So that's how, um, modest they are, or they might even feel like, um, you know, um, showing a lot of legs or showing a lot of cleavage or showing a lot of arms, like whatever it is, I, I feel like there's something about somebody looking at pictures of you, um, and then being a little bit kind of like, Oh, I'm not really sure if that's appropriate. So that's what I'm, I'm getting. Um, and I, then I also feel like if you're posting pictures with a lot of uh, other people, they might hesitate and they might even think that you're, you know, not, um, they, they might even feel like you're not single. And so they might not want to pursue things. Um, this person is quite a catch in your eyes. I feel like you really like this person and you, you like the fact that, you know, they're, um, they're, they're very serious minded is what I'm getting. Like they're, they're all about, you know, they communicate very well. I feel like they're intelligent. Um, they're very self-sufficient. They're very financially stable they're a good person. Like you, it would be, you know, somebody that you want to take home to meet the parents. You want to take, bring around your siblings. You wouldn't mind bringing around your kids. Like it's someone who's very solid, who's family oriented. There's a sense of modesty about them that you find very refreshing. And I, I, I feel like this person is a very good catch. And that's why you're just like, if they engage with me, if they, they show me their intentions or if they, um, come back, then I definitely would give it another go. But in the meantime, I definitely feel like, you know, you're not keeping yourself stuck, just waiting in suspension for this person to make up their mind. So there is a slowness here. It can be a little bit frustrating. And I also feel like, you know, if someone makes you wait for so long and they're not giving you like clear, concise messages or clear and concise direction or intentions, it can feel like the love is starting to kind of trickle out. Okay. It's like, it, it's running low on love. It's running low on passion, but I, I feel like you're still willing to give this another go. Um, I'm also feeling as well for some of you, especially if you share children with, um, you know, an ex, um, there are situations here where I feel it is, we're heading into the holiday season. So if you're in a co-parenting situation, it can be a little bit complicated. Um, my advice for you is, you know, um, don't be on the defensive when communicating with the ex. Don't be on the defensive when trying to split up responsibilities, you know, um, for example, the, the child, uh, your child might want to spend time with their father. And you're just like, but no, but we planned this whole, you know, holiday get together. So make sure that you kind of uh, work out the details. And I would say early on and then stick to them. So, you know, don't wait until the last minute to try to scramble and try to figure out what to do. Because by that time, I feel like you have, um, you would have already, you know, like invited guests or planned something. 
and then they kind of put a little bit of a wrench in the works when it comes to your plans, okay? So I do see co-parenting issues uh, coming into the picture, um, especially if you have children under the age of 10. I feel like it can um, be a source of contention between you and another person. Um, I almost feel as well um, there could be, you know, like um, you and an ex that um, chipping in, like chipping in. So this is a smooth energy, chipping in to get something very expensive for the children. Okay, so that's like compromising. Um, somebody might say, you know, the, the, the child might need this really expensive item. And you're just like, I don't, you, you think, I don't think that's a good idea. Because you're like, they don't need it. You know, they're too young for that. But I feel like there's going to be a compromise reach. Okay, so either way, it's going to be um, smooth out. So, you know, once again, don't be on the defensive. Ask them follow-up questions. A lot of the times when we have strong opinions about something. So, for example, if you have a four-year-old and your ex suggests, uh, let's get an iPad. Uh, I'll chip in half, you chip in half. And you're like, automatically, your instinct is like, what does a four-year-old uh, do with an iPad? Why would a four-year-old need an iPad? Why would someone even suggest that a four-year-old gets an iPad? And so your your defenses or your thoughts are overriding, you know, just that, that um, your emotions pretty much. And I feel like the way that you ask the question, like, like what are you thinking? Um, ask them follow-up questions just even ask them like don't you think our child's a little bit too young for electronics or i'd rather not have my child be distracted with electronics i'd rather you know them play outside or you know we spend more time with them doing arts and crafts and things like that so verbalize things don't jump to don't jump to conclusions just uh, hear the other side out okay and uh, we have to really practice doing that. A lot of the times we have really strong opinions about certain things, the way things should be or should not be. And when somebody kind of puts that into question, I feel like we tend to cut them off or cut off that line of inquiry when in fact we should explore. Why do you think it's so? Or why do you think, you know, the child needs that? Or why do you think uh, that's a good idea? So ask follow-up questions. And I feel like you're going to arrive at a different way of thinking or you're going to at least understand where they're coming from. Okay, so I, I feel there's an element here where we kind of need to let our guard down when we communicate so that we don't jump to conclusions, don't automatically assume the worst, or, you know, don't, um, um, I, I guess, like, impose ourselves in that situation and not let the other person have their say or not hear the other person's point of view okay so as a generic message it just signifies to me that um, compromise is going to be important um, what I feel as well is um, there's going to be I, I see like a lot of people with extended families um, you might for example your parents might be divorced as well. And, um, you know, mom has a new family, dad has a new family. You might even have your new family. So there are just so many gatherings. I feel like you're traveling a lot. You're traveling, trying to um, appease everybody. I don't see you doing it in a stressful manner. I feel like it's well planned out. So I don't see you, you know, like uh, going to mom's at two and then scrambling to get to dad's family at five. I don't see that. But I, I do feel like there's a lot of travel, a lot of movement, a lot of things happening and, and lots of family gatherings that you have to go to. And um, it's a yearly thing. So I feel like you've already got the system worked out. You've already got your routine and uh, everything is pretty much planned out. So I definitely see like generations, um, you know, at least three generations, grandparents, there might be the grandparents, the parents, and then you, or you might have your own children. So it's the children, you, and then your parents. Um, but I see like lots of different households, um, lots of different households. Um, so once again, that, that message with the bell makes sense because it's calling all the dolphins to come to one location. So it's like, this is where we meet. This is the meeting point, and this is the agreed upon location. Um, but there's, 
I, I see them swimming. So they're, they're moving across, you know, um, long distance to long distances in order to be there in order to be at this exact location at that specific time when the bells ring. Um, the other thing I'm sensing as well in this spread is um, for those of you who are single, um, there is definitely, oh, there's definitely somebody who's very, very, very attracted to you. Okay. So for those who are single, um, what I have here is a really, really attractive man. So I'm, I'm feeling like there's an attractive man. Well, he shows up here as the king of wands. Once again, the cards can be, you know, um, either gender, but look at this guy. He's, um, he's really, really attractive. He's, he's very attractive. And, um, the energy that I pick up from this man, the energy I pick up from this person is that they're really looking at you. Like they're checking you out. They're, um, they're looking at you with a lot of um, a lot of inappropriate thoughts. Okay, so like they're they like what they see. They definitely want to be intimate with you. That's what I'm feeling. Um, so let me just try to let me try to unpack this. So what I because I, I feel like the circumstances could be different. So I feel like this is a possibly a fire sign Sagittarius Aries or Leo this is someone that is a little bit like outdoorsy they like to do things outdoors they like um they like camping fishing shooting guns even um uh, going to like um uh going hiking they they're they're very very athletic possibly and uh, they might be into sports I I also see somebody who who likes guns you know like shooting guns outdoors or indoors or whatever it is i'm also feeling somebody who might be in some type of a law enforcement capacity okay so they might wear a uniform they might wear a gun to work they might have handcuffs they are just very very alpha their energy is really strong they're physically strong and i feel like they're really very attractive um for those who are single watching this, um, I, I, I'm sensing that, you know, you might have gotten out of a relationship, okay? And I feel like you might have children. You might have gotten out of a relationship. You're doing the co-parenting thing with your ex. And you're just like, I don't want to be bothered. I want to take care of the kids. I want to just, you know, do me, focus on me, climb the corporate ladder. Um, I feel you guys are dressed really, really nice. So... I'm seeing people wearing suits. I'm seeing people like you guys, Aries. I'm seeing people wearing suits, um, wearing like, you know, um, silk blouses, high heels. Like you work in a, a, an environment that is also very corporate, okay? And, you know, you go through your motions and um, you keep to yourself, I feel. You're friendly with people, but you're not overly flirtatious. And I feel like that person is really, really liking what they see. They really like you. They're very attracted to you. Um, they do want to get intimate with you, okay? And I, I feel um, if they're, they've been holding back, you, wanna, you might want to check to see if they're wearing a wedding ring because I feel like they might be in another relationship, like a serious relationship. Either they're engaged or they're wearing a wedding band, uh, an engagement band, or they are um, married. And, uh, you know, it, it's almost like they can... See, you feel it, too, when you're around this person. I, I do see, like, really, really strong magnetism with this person. And it's almost like they're undressing you with their eyes. It's very inappropriate. Or I don't think they're being inappropriate, but like you can you can feel it because their desire is very strong. But I feel like they hold back because they're in another relationship. OK, so I see the single Aries and I see this person who's really attracted to you. Um, but once again, you know, the, the person is sitting down, holding back, not really making a move. And even though they feel the passion and the chemistry really, really strongly, we have here Ace of Wands. And we also have a relationship here, Four of Wands. 
I also feel like for those of you who are in a relationship, you might be, you know, the energy could be flipped too. You could be feeling very attracted to another person. And this person, they dress really well. There's something about the way that they dress. They look very regal. Like they look very uh, put together. Um, they're very like, especially they're, they're, um, it's almost like they, they look like a model. They look like somebody out of a magazine. You know, they, they dress well. All their clothes are tailored. And uh, everything fits perfectly right the way that it should. Like they, they look really put together. And you're really attracted to this person. And I feel like they are attracted to you too. And there's a, um, there's like communication between the two of you. And I feel like the communication is very official in nature. Um, this person is holding a falcon. And so I feel like they have really, I don't know why, but they have really, really high standards, okay? They're not just looking for a pigeon. A, a, the, the pigeon would signify like the communication back and forth. That is a little bit more mundane, a little bit more common. This is a falcon. This is a rare bird. This is a rare species. And this is somebody who who likes the exotic, okay? So they, I feel like they, they are very, very picky about who they get involved with. And the Nine of Pentacles is usually the bachelor or the bachelorette. It's somebody who's single. And until they are 100% sure that they want to be with somebody, that's when they're going to stop being single. Okay, so it's like somebody with high standards. Um, they Their energy is a little bit like, I'll focus on me for now. And if whoever decides to come in, I'm going to, you know, like, I'll believe it when I see it. So they're not naive. They're not going to take things at face value. They've got lots of things they're focusing on. Um, they're very financially independent. They don't need anybody to take care of them. And I feel like, you know, they're just happy being on their own. And this is somebody that you definitely really like. And you want to bring home to, you know, to see the, meet the family. And so there's, there is that element here about really strong attraction between two people. For some of you, I feel like you could be dealing with a Cancerian person. Um, and then others, I feel like a very strong fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo. And so I feel like there's definitely somebody who's single, who's being looked at, who's being eyed by somebody who's in a relationship. So that's what I'm getting here. Um, I see a lot of family things, but, um, you know, the family things will occupy a lot of your time. And then the flirtation, the, the attraction here, it is really intense and it is very, very strong. It's, <laughs> it's really, really strong. It's like jumping out at me where, you know, the, there's somebody with a lot of pheromones, like they're emitting pheromones and they want you to know how they feel. But I, I feel like, you know, they're trying to do the right thing and they're, they're not trying to, um, they're, they're not trying to step out of the relationship. I, I feel like they're not purposely doing that, okay? So that is all that I have for you here, Aries. I hope the reading is helpful for you guys.